And uh, one singer said it like he goes, I am yours. I am yours. I've been bought with life so precious. I am new. I'm brand new in you, my Jesus. I am yours. I am yours. You hold all my life in your hands. And when I hear your spirit calling me, I'll follow, yes, I'll follow, because I'm yours. And I think that's the key to walking the way that God wants us to. Is just remember that I belong to Him. And I know how you feel. Sometimes you probably feel like, God, did you have any idea what you're getting yourself into when you saved me? Uh, you know, but all those doubts and stuff that we have from time to time, I'm going to tell you something. That's as normal as it can possibly be. Don't think you're the only one going through that. We want to start out this morning. Uh, oh, let's make our, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I will do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. And my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Uh, I want to start out by recognizing if you are in the service or you have been and you've served in the service, I'd like you to stand up and, and uh, we just want to thank you. Stand up where you are. We want to recognize you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. It means a lot to us. Thank you. I think there are some people that don't recognize that we wouldn't have the freedoms we have today if there wasn't blood shed for it. The Bible says there can be no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. And the reality of it is, you are a believer today. Uh, I heard uh, J. Vernon McGee say this one time, and I thought, man, that sounds kind of rough. But then I realized he was true. He said, you are not saved by the love of God. And I'm listening. I said, what? He goes, you were saved by the wrath of God. He poured his wrath on his own son, had he not done that, you'd still be in your sin. So thank you, God, that you poured the punishment that I deserved upon your own son. It still blows my mind to this very day. We're going to go to 2 Timothy. And uh, uh, the third verse starts out there. In, endure suffering along with me. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Say, I'm a soldier. And now, that is a place of honor, and it's a place of work. And I think sometimes people say, well, I'm saved. That's all that matters. No, you're a soldier for Christ. You're involved in a battle right now. Jesus assured our, our winning that battle, but guess what? We're still involved with the battle. All through the scriptures, it lets us know that the, the devil wants to discourage us from doing the very things that God called us to do. And so he'll send everything he possibly can to keep us from doing it. Amen? Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of, Je of Christ Jesus. Am I ringing? Uh, and as Christ's soldier, do not let yourself become... Here's the key. Do not let yourself get tied up in the affairs of this life. This is not the main life. This isn't the main thing we were created for. I was created to spend an eternity in the presence of my God. And I'm here on this earth for a short period of time 
so that I might have time to receive him and I might have time to, to share the gospel with other people. I got tickled I, I, when I, we were, I saw Melissa opening up the doors. We had some air in here because one of our phases is out. What would you say? Phase B? B phase and a three phase electrical system. And uh, uh, so we don't have any air conditioning this morning. Then I thought, well, wait a second. I started out preaching across the street from Royal Liquors Amen. in the street. And I didn't have any sound system. I didn't have any cooling. I didn't have anything to heat me. I, you know, kind of brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> I thought, even if it got gotten here, I, if we didn't have a sound system, I would just have to be louder like I was on the street. You know what I mean? So Amen. at any rate, the point is, is that it still feels pretty good in here, don't it? And uh, it's always good when you get to hear the word. And as Christ told you, don't let yourself get tied up in the affairs of this life. If all you do is spend your time uh, seeing what the rest of the world is going through, you're getting tied up in the affairs of this life. Don't get tied up. That's nothing. It seems like something to you, but it's nothing. The reality is I belong to God. I'm his prized possession. Amen? Say that. I'm his prized possession. I mean, he, he loved you so much. That he sent his cross to die, uh, sent his son to die on that cross for your sin, for your well-being. Amen? And uh, so he said, don't get tied up in the things of this life. And what are the things of this life? There are a lot of things. Like people get so, they're so tied up in the things of this life, and I realize they have to look at these things, but they'll go like this and say, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, my paycheck ain't what it used to be. So the point is, I can look at you right here, right now, and tell you, you're not missing meals. <laughs> I can tell. Although, telling on Joy here, when I went to her, when I went to their wedding vow re renewal, she put on the same wedding dress she did when she got married all those years ago. There's not a lot of women that could do that, you know what I'm saying? But at any rate, uh, don't get caught up in the things of this life. I mean, it's easy to go like this and say, you don't know the troubles I'm having. Well, I have compassion for you, but the reality of it is there's nothing going on in your, your life that God is not aware of. He knows everything that's going on. And because the Bible says that he's touched by our infirmities, he's not sitting alongside going, well, I don't care what happens to them. He does care. But he's given us tools in this life to be able to be overcomers. Amen? If we try to fix everything on our own, we're not going to do it. But if we look to God, the, the keeper of everything that we have, then we can overcome in this life. So no matter what struggle you're going through right now, can I tell you this before I get too involved here? That you look at your troubles because you're living day by day, second by second, minute by minute. But God looks at time like a snapshot. Uh, in the eyes of God, I just got saved. I've lived a good life, and I'm already home with him. In his eyes, we're finished products. So he has seen the beginning of your problems, and he knows where the end of your problems are. You may not know. Don't you wish he'd just tell us that? Well, now, in three weeks, everything's going to go good. Bob, all right, can you just move me on forward to the three-week time so I don't have to go through <laughs> But he knows everything. Listen, don't get tied up in the things of this life. You're a soldier for Christ. For then, if you get tied up in the things of this life, for then you cannot satisfy the one who enlisted you in his army. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that in Hebrews 1, 6. Uh, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't be worried about the things of this life and be in faith. Either you're in faith or you're in fear. You get to decide which one you're going to be in. Amen? And with everything that goes on in my life, I've just decided to trust him. I think I can trust him. What do you think, Lindsay? Can you trust him? I'm just doing that. I like to call on people occasionally to make sure they're listening. You know what I do to Debbie when sometimes she goes like this? She'll be watching TV, watching a movie, and I know she's sleeping because she's snoring. <laughs> I said, are you sleeping? No, just dozing. I said, is there a difference? <laughs> I thought you really wanted to see this movie, you know. I'm just, I'm just dozing. I said, so you've seen everything going on? Yeah, I've seen everything. 
What did you think about those pink butterflies that flew by a while ago? She goes, there were no pink butterflies, I know, but that's not because you watched it, because you know I'm lying to you. That's what it is. <laughs> Follow the Lord's rules for doing his work. Just as an athlete either follows the rules or is disqualified with, and wins no prize. Hardworking farmers are the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will give you understanding in all these things. God's going to give you understanding. He will. He doesn't want you broke, busted, and disgusted and confused in this life. Nothing in the Bible says that, that you're supposed to do. Uh, which one of you really want your children to suffer terribly? Do you want any of your children to suffer, or do you want them to do well? Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible tells us if, if, if we being wicked take care of our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father give unto them that after? If God loves us so much, He's going to take better care of us than we ever took care of our children. Amen? And so don't get caught up in the affairs of this life. You're a soldier. Never forget Jesus Christ was a man born into King David's family and that he was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach the good news, I'm suffering, have been chained like a criminal. Wait! If I'm doing what God wants me to, you mean I might still go through persecution? He promises it. It shouldn't come as a surprise. There is persecution for people that make a stand for Christ. If you don't want any persecution, don't make a stand for Christ. You can just try to live out your secret Christianity where nobody knows that you're saved. But let me tell you, there's no blessing in that. But the Word of God cannot be changed. I love this. The Word of God cannot be chained. I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. Man, let me tell you something. We, we talk about Memorial Day, and it means a lot for us to remember people that have given their life so we might have freedom here. It means a lot to me. You know, uh, uh, if it's anything like any other year on Memorial Day, uh, 4,600 to 5,000 people will visit uh, the Arizona in Hawaii because of what happened there. 3,000 people will come to visit on Memorial Day uh, to the Vietnam Wall. Uh, why? It matters to us when people have given their life so we might have the freedoms we enjoy today. Amen? It is the same reason when I see a, a man wearing a cap or something that lets me know he's in the service, uh, uh, I always thank him for their service. We ought to care about that. Amen? But the Lord tells us that he'll give us understanding in all things. Then he says down here, but the word of God cannot be chained. Mm. You might try to, this world might try to put the church down and hold it down where they can't do anything. I'm going to tell you something. You can't stop the word of God. It's set in heaven. If I speak the word, it's going to bring a, chain in, a change in somebody every time. I didn't say part of the time. Every time. I, do, I still believe to this day, as much as I read this word, I can't pick up this word without this word changing me. Some guy asked me one time, he said, I don't understand, where do you find all them sermons? I said, in this book. <laughs> you know, like I said, you know, if I preached out of the Harley manual, it wouldn't do anybody any good. Might even make them mad, you know what I'm saying? So, confused, yeah. I'm willing to endure anything. Well, what did he say earlier? As a good soldier, endure hardness. You're going to go through some things in this world, but I'm ready to endure it if, if, if somehow in the midst of all that I go through while I'm sharing the word of God, if people will say yes to Jesus and receive him as their Savior, it's worth it whatever we go through. It's worth it. You know, the, the disciples that walked with God, they died horrible deaths. Did you know that? I don't remember which one had done one. I think John was boiled in oil. And uh, that sounds like a bad way to go. And uh, 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 was it Peter that was hung upside down? I mean, just over and over again. They, they died horrible deaths. Why? They were ready to give their life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. To me, that's the type of commitment we ought to all have. 
when I was talking to a guy about self-defense one time, I said, you have, a, you have a right and a responsibility to protect your family. The Bible says that man doesn't take care of his family. He's worse than an unbeliever. You need to take care of your family. And uh, he said, would you do that? Yeah, for my family. But I can't tell you that at this point in my life, if somebody wanted to hit me for something, I'd say, I might let him hit me. It might be a better. Now, listen to what I'm saying. It might be better than a testimony than me fighting. That's not an invitation to you guys. <laughs> Blood was shed for our American freedom. Blood was shed for our spiritual freedom. We need to recognize this. And Jesus is greater than everyone who ever lived. Say that. Jesus is greater than everyone who ever lived. Amen. Just Colossians 1, 16. Hallelujah. Let's start actually in, in 15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before God made anything at all and is supreme over all creation. How do I know he's supreme over all creation? Well, how do I know that? Because all the miracles he did were anti what is supposed to happen in creation. Like, for instance, when he told the storm, be still. Natural creation doesn't just stop because I'm there. Or I would just pray that way. And when I ride my motorcycle and there's a storm up there, I'd say, Lord, put a bubble of sunshine over me. But no, but Jesus had power over all creation because everything was made by him and everything was made for him. And there's another verse, another chapter that says, and everything is held together by the word of his power. Yeah. I'm so glad he's so loving so he doesn't say, I don't like it. I'm just going to tell it to separate. Let him turn into atoms, float around or something, you know. Christ is the one through whom God created everything in heaven and earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. Kings, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities. Everything has been created through him and for him. When you step out that door, everything you say was created for him. Even this church, we may have built this church with our hands. Uh, Leroy got tired of it by the time we got done. But uh, 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 we may have built this church with our own hands. But I tell you this, can I say this? We may build it with our hands, but it was God doing the church. He existed before everything else began. He holds all creation together. Christ is the head of the church. I love telling people, who's the head of heart of God? I said, Christ. No, I mean, really, Christ. Well, not long after I'm gone, heart of God will be here because the head isn't stepping down, is he? So Christ... He's the head of the church. And what's he say about the church? What is the church? Which is his what? His body. When sometimes when people go like this and they'll say, it doesn't matter if I'm at church or not. I don't know. Is that right? So, so today, if one part of your body decided not to be there, would that be all right with you? <laughs> no. Just because the eye is not the hand doesn't mean that the eye doesn't need the hand. You know, my eye may, may, may fix on something that my body wants to pick up, but without a hand, that eye's going to have a hard time picking it up. Every, every part of my body has its own function. And Christ is the head of this body, and the church is his body. Say, the church, the church. is his body. Is his body. That's the key thing to remember. Uh, uh, I am owned by him. He created everything. He is in charge of everything. Pastor Bob is not in charge of everything. And I'm kind of glad of that. Do you know why? Because every now and then people come up with stories that ain't even true. Years ago when we had a uh, daycare in here, 
the gals had a coffee meeting. We're talking. They said, well, we need coat hooks put up. Oh, don't do that. Pastor Bob be mad if you put coat hooks up. Why would I care about coat hooks? I care about if you're going to hang the kids on them, maybe, but if you're going to hang coats on them, I'm glad you got coat hooks. And so I've had every kind of thing in the world said about me. That's why when people come up to me, so people are talking to me. Yeah, that's what people do. Can I give you a clue there? If you know who you are in Christ, you won't give a flip what they say about you. I don't care. People have been offended before when I've said, you know what? I don't really care what you think about what I preach. Because I'm not going to start asking you, should I preach this? Because I can either be led by you or I can be led by Christ. Amen? Somebody is calling somebody. Jesus must be calling somebody on the phone. For God, he is the first of all who will rise from the dead, so he's the first in everything. For God in his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and by him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and, and on earth by means of the blood of the cross. I want to tell you right now, if you haven't recognized this, that's one of the strongest grace statements in the Bible. One of the strongest ones. That you have completely eliminated that if you think by your actions, God's angry at you. No, he made peace with everything through the blood of cross. There's never a time he's looking at me and saying, oh man, I ought to smack him. He's never thinking that. He loves me. He loves me. Now be honest, do you always love yourself? No. But are you glad God loves you today? Leroy, God even loves you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you knew I was going to start picking on you, didn't you? I don't care. He made peace with everything. Now, I'm talking about, listen to me, I'm talking about the greatest soldier that ever lived, Jesus Christ, who fought the enemy and overcame the enemy and overcame everything for me. It pleased him. Years ago when somebody asked me, he said, why did he save us? I said, read Ephesians 1. It tells you that he saved us for his good pleasure. Now, why did he do that? Well, I can tell you that years ago people were saying things. God created man so somebody would worship him. God is not that way. He's not up in heaven going, I just don't feel good about myself. I just wish somebody would say something nice or pat me on the back. No, God is complete. Yeah. Now, you know what else? In Colossians, it says you're complete in him. Yeah. Say, I'm complete. I'm complete. Nothing you can add to me. Can add to I'm, complete. I'm complete. Doesn't that make you feel good? I don't know why so much preaching has been done to try to scare people. You can't scare people. Why? They're basically idiots. <laughs> well, the Bible said there's none good, no, not one. Every now and then when something's on Facebook that I know is just as wrong as it can be, I just feel like I ought to correct it. <laughs> and somebody was saying, making statements like that the other day, I said, no. The, the statement somebody made from the Christian Biker Association is that people are basically good. Well, that's contrary to the Word of God. And somebody says, well, well, you know, children when they're born are good. Is that right? Let me help you with that. If two, pe if two small kids, two small child toddlers want one toy, and there's only one toy, and they'll be savage, won't they? All of a sudden, what happened to all that poor sweet thing? Now, grandparents, we're not good about disciplining kids. Have, you, have we figured that out? Yeah. My kids would say things like this. You didn't let us get away with it. I was your dad. <laughs> now I'm Popo. <laughs> and we have a real twisted look at life. I mean, I'm the type of person that could go like this and say, oh, look at that dear, wonderful, 
child in the backyard, so inventive. And the way he saws that dog in half. <laughs> we just we just don't look at things right. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of the blood of the cross. And, and then we go down where he says, as a result, he has brought you into the very presence of God. When people say this to me, God doesn't talk to me anymore, I'll say, no, that's never the case. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Can I tell you this? That word is a continuous verb, which means God is always speaking. Always speaking. He's always talking. The question is, are we listening? But you must continue to believe in the truth and stand in it for me. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed by God to protect it. Listen to me. God, Jesus was greater than every other person that ever lived. He was greater than all creation. I talked about that. But we know by John 8, 5, uh, I mean 8, 53 and 58, it says Jesus was greater than Abraham. Do you know what a statement that was to make? To go to a Jew and say Jesus was greater than Abraham. But Jesus said more about that. He, he said I was, he, he told people that he was greater than Abraham. He was greater than Moses. He was greater than Solomon. He was greater than uh, 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 Jonah. He, he was just greater than anyone who had ever lived. I don't have anybody else. Going. Can we tell you something else? Jesus is greater than Buddha. Amen. He's greater than Joseph Smith. No, he's greater than everybody. He's greater than Bob Katz. I had a guy say, you're one of the greatest preachers I ever heard. I said, then you need to get out more. <laughs> get out and listen to other preachers. And the greatest preacher was Jesus. He had the greatest impact. Somebody said one time, he said, what was it like before there were apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists? Let me go ahead and tell you this. If you study the word, you'll find out that Jesus was an apostle. He was uh, he, he, an apostle. He was a prophet. He was a pastor. He was a teacher. He was an evangelist. And when he left this earth, he didn't want to leave us down here in the nasty now and now without the people we needed. So he appointed apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists to replace the work that he did here. Amen? My gosh. Somebody told me one time, they called me up and said, I don't believe in prophets today. I said, then you don't know your word. He goes, why? Why? Because he tells us in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, how long we'd have apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. He said, how long? Until we all come into the unity of the faith. Are we there? So we still have all these gifts from God. He was greater than Jacob. The woman at the well. Do you remember when he was talking to the woman at the well? And she said... Uh, what, well, do you think you're greater than Jacob? He gave us water this well. He gave us the water from this well. And, and Jesus answered it by saying, the water you drink from here, you'll be thirsty again. But the water I give you, you'll never thirst again. Was he greater than Jacob? Yes. The greatest man that ever lived. Hallelujah. He was greater than Solomon. We find that in Matthew 12. He was greater than Jonah. We find that in Matthew 12 as well. He was greater than John the Baptist. How do I know that? Because he even talked about how good. Never been a prophet like John the Baptist. But when John the Baptist talked about him, he said, there's, there's one who's coming that's greater than I, that I'm not even worthy to tie his sandal. He was talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was talking about Jesus. The great one. I can't be drawn by any other religion. Why? I know the greatest one that ever lived. 
Did you know he still lives? He rose from the grave. With all the other ones that we know about, they died, that's it. They have books they've written about them. Somebody said, uh, what's your problem with Islam? I don't have a problem with Islam. I'm just not Islam. The only problem I have with it is that Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And he gave his life, Jesus did on the cross, so that everyone could be saved, right? Then Jesus didn't tell us anybody that's not converted, kill them. He said, do you think all uh, uh, Muslims are mean? I don't think all of anybody's mean. But if they're not led by the same spirit, Jesus Christ, what did Jesus Christ say even to the Jews, the Pharisees? And he said, your father's the devil. We need to be ready. The Bible says we need to be get, uh, ready to give an answer uh, about the promise that we have from God. We need to tell people, this is why I believe. This wonderful book here, 40 authors, 66 books. They didn't all live at the same time, but they all say the same thing. What other book is there? There's no other book like this. This is still the number one selling book. Somebody said, Dude, the, mo the number one selling book is Harry Potter. No. <laughs> Not even close. The Bible is still the best selling book. Why? It's only brings hope. And it's not a self-help book. Don't hand it to people and say, here's a self-help book. This is a book that says, I'm too stupid to help myself. So I need to lean on Jesus. Amen? Amen. I need to have Jesus. Hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. He was greater than John. He was greater than in every... Philippians 2.9 said he was greater than every. Why? He said, because at the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you this, that I don't know that the way that Jesus spoke is the same way that I can speak. Do you know why? Because I don't know that I'm bold enough to walk up to somebody that's part of another cult and say, your father's a devil. He may not listen to me after that. <laughs> they also won't listen to you if you go like this, say, you know, you're a sinner. That's no news. Nobody had to tell me I was a sinner. I lived like hell most of my life. Don't tell me I'm a sinner. I know that. I need a solution. When, Christi when Christianity gets to the place where we're no longer telling drowning people about water, we'll accomplish something here. We're soldiers for Jesus. I don't need to bring up every other person's problem in this life to do what Jesus wants me to do. I need to let them know that you may think that you're a sinner, but God says that he took all your sins upon the cross. He took them. If you go to hell, it will not be because of sin. It'll be because you have rejected Jesus as your Savior. Amen? That great soldier, Jesus Christ. Let's go to Acts 6.8. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem. And all the believers except the apostles fled into Judea and Samaria. Some godly men came and buried Stephen with a loud weeping. Why did they do that? Well, he had started out preaching the gospel, and he told people exactly what they did not want to hear, that they had just crucified the Lord. Amen? The Jewish leaders were infuriated, it says back in the 7th chapter, the Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation, and they shook their fists in rage. But Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, say full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadfastly upward into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and drowning out this voice with their shouts, they rushed him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. The official witnesses took off their coats and had them at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, 
don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Well, what was he? He was a true soldier for God. He did what God called him to do. And he looked so much like Jesus when in the midst of that terrible event, he said, don't count this sin against them, Lord. Don't count this sin against them. Oh, to have that kind of love and concern. I want to remind you this. You may think your job Monday is to get up and go to work your job. But I want to tell you this. You are never anywhere where you shouldn't look like Jesus and spread a word of salvation where you can, wherever you are. The people that hang around me will tell you, I don't just say that, I live that. I tell people about Jesus. You know why? I want to look around someday when I'm in heaven and see the fruit of what we did in this church. Amen? Don't you want to see that? Can you imagine what it would be like to have somebody come up to you in heaven and go, oh, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm so glad, Ralph, that you shared the gospel with me. I'm so glad you told me about Jesus. I'm here today because you took the time to tell me what I didn't know. People are not born with the knowledge of Christ. They need to be told that there's a God who cares about them. There's a God who sees all the troubles that they go through. There's a God that can help them out if they'll just reach out and reach up for the God that cares for them so much that he gave his life. Now, what does a life like that produce? Let me show you. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem. All the believers except the apostles fled. Saul was going everywhere to devastate the church. He went from house to house, dragging out. Saul is the one we call Paul later on. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into jail. But the believers who had fled Jerusalem went everywhere, preaching the good news about Jesus. What happens when Christians decide, I'm going to make a stand. I'm not going to ride this fence anymore. I'm not going to just go to church, but my whole life is going to be poured out to you, God. And, and I need you to work through me. I need you to work through me, Lord. Do in me what you want to do. I'm yours. I'm yours. And when you live a life that way, no matter what happens, you'll have such an effect on everybody that the gospel will be spread everywhere. Say, I'm a soldier for Jesus. I can do a little hardness if we'll get some people saved. You receive that from the pastor this morning? Amen. Well, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people in this room would honestly say, the devil is really giving me heck. I'm having some struggles in my life and I need to listen. Did you know when I ask a question like that, if you think you're supposed to handle that problem, you're already losing. You are not, you're not capable of handling those problems yourself. God is the one. Jesus will work in you to take care of those things. Jesus will do it. Did you know if we had the ability to act we, the way we should, Jesus would have never had come. Hallelujah. 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 I want a little body ministry to go on this morning. If you raise your hand, raise it again. Raise it again. And other people that are looking around, go to the ones that have their hands raised right now. Go. Get out of your seat and go lay hands on them and pray for them about whatever's going on inside their life. Pray for them. Prayer is the answer. Call out to God.
because he has the answer. He is the answer. Am I on now? All right. We'll take communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, who was here when we were in the orchard building over here? So you don't ever want to say this was hot until you're inside. <laughs> people always remember things from the past. Like I have still people say, well, I remember I liked it when we were just meeting in your home. I couldn't fit all you guys in my home. So, uh, Remember to get your shirts from, uh, I just lost your name again, from Michelle. I knew that, too. F from, get your shirt, if you ordered a shirt that says, never, 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 never be the same, from Michelle, after the service, come pick it up from her, and uh, she's got them with her, so. Yeah, that shirt right there, I love never, never, never. My long sleeve one's not in yet, is it? Oh, you do? Okay. Okay, good. Can we put the uh, prayer up there on the screen? Communion prayer? Is it up here? It was up there. I'm ready now. 
All right. Let's hold the bread up. Say it with me. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. It is for my healing, my spouse's healing, my children's healing. Thank you that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes which fell on your back, we are completely healed. I believe and I receive. Let's hold the cup up. Thank you, Jesus, for the new covenant cut in your blood. Your blood has brought me forgiveness, washed me from every sin. I thank you that your blood has made me righteous. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do what? I can't hear what you're saying. Laura. Okay, you need to say something? Everybody go see Laura right after the service. Where are you going to be? At the table out there. Okay. If you haven't paid or haven't let her know about the service, you know, she said it once before, uh, if you just cannot afford, and that's the only reason you're not going to, to the deal, uh, then we have some scholarship available, and, and go anyway. It's a good time, and we have a good time of fellowship. And I like to tell people, you might hide who you are here, but you won't when, they're, when we're all together down there at camp. <laughs> so at any rate, well, you know, the Word of God says this. It said, uh, with this tongue we bless God, but we curse man who was made in God's image. My brethren, it ought not be so. Let's just speak a blessing right now. Father, I speak a blessing at everyone here. Business, home, social, physical, mental, and spiritual. Pour out your love, your power, your grace, your spirit in such a mighty way that when the rest of the world sees them, they'll say, surely these people have been with Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful day.